there are three robots. The chat GPT moment for general robotics is just around the corner. This will be the largest technology industry the world's ever seen. NVIDIA Cosmos, the world's first world foundation model. It is trained on 20 million hours of video. The 20 million hours of video focuses on physical dynamic things. So dynamic nature, nature themes, themes, humans, walking, hands, moving, manipulating things, you know, things that are fast camera movements. It's really about teaching the AI, not about generating creative content, but teaching the AI to understand the physical world. We're in an incredible time with robotics. The critical technologies necessary to build general humanoid robotics is just around the corner. And one of the critical pieces of technology uh, is uh, an AI model that understands the world. Just as we have an AI model that understands language now with ChatGPT and Llama and such. All of this is part of the Cosmos platform. We hope that this moment, and there's a, there's a small, medium, large, for very fast models, you know, mainstream models, and also teacher. Models, basically not knowledge transfer models, Cosmo, Cosmos World Foundation. Model being open, we really hope will do for the world of robotics and industrial AI what Llama 3 has done for enterprise. AI, the magic happens when you connect Cosmos to Omniverse. And the reason, fundamentally, is this. Omniverse is a physics grounded, not physically grounded, but physics grounded. It's algorithmic physics, principled physics, simulation, grounded system. It's a simulator. When you connect that to Cosmos, it provides the grounding, the ground truth that can control and to condition the Osmos generation. Well, the first part of training an AI is you, you have to give them foundation knowledge, yeah. okay, common sense knowledge. The second part is you have to fine tune them in skills. You have to teach them things. And the way you teach a general robotics is kind of like the way you teach a person, you show it to them. And so you use human demonstration and you show them this is the way you pick up a glass. But every time the glass is a little bit different, it's positioned a little different, the height's a little different, and the shape's a little different. And yet, uh, it's basically picking up a glass of water. And so using Groot, using Isaac Groot, we could use, we could do a few human demonstrations and then using AI, using Cosmos and uh, Omniverse to generate a whole bunch of future versions of it. And so, so then we generate all a whole bunch of versions of different sizes and different locations and placements. And uh, uh, we give all of that training data, like invitation data, to the robot to learn from. And so now it learned a whole bunch of generalized versions of it. Yes. As a result, what comes out of Osmos is grounded on truth. This is exactly the same idea as connecting a large language model to a RAG, to a retrieval augmented generation system, you want to ground the AI generation on ground truth. And so the combination of the two gives you a physically simulated, a physically grounded multiverse generator. And the application and the use cases are really quite exciting. And of course, for robotics, for industrial applications, it is very, very clear. Well, the robotics industry has a hard time getting off the ground because it's hard to train a robot. And you have to create a whole bunch of experiences for the robot. And it's also hard, it's also dangerous to train a robot in the physical world. And so we created a virtual world where a robot could, you know, a playground for a robot essentially. And so this Omniverse is a virtual playground. It Omniverse plus Cosmos represents the third computer that's necessary for building robotic systems. Every robotics company will ultimately have to build three computers, a robotics. The robotic system could be a factory. The robotic system could be a car. It could be a robot. You need three fundamental computers. One computer, of course, to train the AI. We call it the DGX computer to train the AI. Another, of course, when you're done to deploy the AI, we call that AGX. That's inside the car, in the robot, or in an AMAR, or, you know, at the stadium or whatever it is. These computers are at the edge, and they're autonomous. But to connect the two, you need a digital twin. And this is all the simulations that you were seeing. The digital twin is where the AI that has been trained goes to practice to be refined. And so, it's the digital twin of the AI. 
these three computers going to be working interactively? There are several things that we have to bring together. First, the robot has to understand us. Um, and, and the breakthroughs in ChatGPT, for example, uh, has really made that, made that possible. But uh, what's missing is that we now need a AI that understands the physical world. It has to understand the dynamics of the physical world, like gravity, inertia, friction, and it has to understand spatial relationships and geometric relationships and, you know, and common, common sense things like, per, you know, object permanence and things like that. And so we went off to create essentially uh, the ChatGPT or the Llama of uh, world models. And it's called World Foundation Model, just like a, just like a um, language foundation model. This is a, a foundation model that understands worlds. And so, so if we could create such a thing, and that's what Cosmos is, and we, we uh, made it available openly for everyone, uh, hopefully this will uh, really ignite the, um, and accelerate the development of robot, robotics. The ChatGPT moment for general robotics is just around the corner. And in fact, all of the enabling technologies that I've been talking about is going to make it possible for us in the next several years to see very rapid breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs in general robotics. Now, the reason why general robotics is so important is, whereas robots with tracks and wheels require special environments to accommodate them, there are three robots that we can make that require no green fields. Brownfield adaptation is perfect if we, if we could possibly build these amazing robots we could deploy them in exactly the world that we've built for ourselves. These three robots are, one, agentic robots and agentic AI because, you know, they're information workers. So long as they could accommodate the computers that we have in our offices, it's going to be great. Number two, self-driving cars. And the reason for that is we spent 100 plus years building roads and cities. And then number three, human robots. If we have the technology to solve these three, this will be the largest technology industry the world's ever seen. And so we think that robotics era is just around the corner. The critical capability is how to train these robots. In the case of human-owned robots, the imitation information is rather hard to collect. And the reason for that is, in the case of car, you just drive it. We're driving cars all. Time in the case of these human robots, the imitation information that the human demonstration is rather laborious to do, and so we need to come up with a clever way to take hundreds of demonstrations, thousands of human demonstrations, and somehow use artificial intelligence and omniverse to synthetically generate millions of motions. And from those motions, the AI can learn how to perform a task. But now artificial intelligence is everywhere. Well, artificial intelligence is unquestionably the single most important technology of our time. And and uh, when you take a step back and ask yourself what would happen if we could scale intelligence and apply it and channel that capability and direct it at uh, healthcare for drug discovery or um, figuring out how to deal with climate, climate, uh, climate change or um, just, you know, uh, uh, building robotics, uh, for example, the things, that, the things that we're working on so that we could uh, deal with the aging population, declining population, and prevent uh, and help alleviate the uh, uh, inflation that's going on everywhere by driving productivity into every single industry. Um, and there's just so many things that, that um, uh, artificial intelligence is gonna impact. And, and so that's why we're, as a company, we're all completely into it. Yes. Now, artificial intelligence affects all of our other businesses. You know, from even though G-Force was really the, the vehicle that that made artificial intelligence possible, AI has now gone back to G-Force and made computer graphics more amazing, yeah. And it's just, it's just incredible what we're able to do now, combining artificial intelligence and computer graphics. And so we're using artificial intelligence to we're combining it with physical sciences and revolutionizing the way we do scientific computing. We're combining it with, you know, the way that we design chips to that we design better chips and the way we develop better software. And so artificial intelligence is affecting everything that we do and it's going to impact everything that every industry out there. So it's, it's the single most important thing, undoubtedly. Um, you know, it, it seems like artificial intelligence from both the business and technical standpoint is definitely a great area for, for them to continue to, to pursue. Yeah, I think the, the, the of course, there's, there's the contributing to the basic science of artificial intelligence. And, and, um, and I, th I think that that's terrific. 
However, the, the next decade, the application of artificial intelligence, the applied sciences is going to be really important. Yes. You know, how does, how, uh, I work with ChatGPT as a companion every day, you know, yeah, and so, so I have ChatGPT on all the time and I'm asking you questions and, and working with it to solve problems. You have to, you have to learn how to interact with AI and prompting, as you know, um, has a, has a real art to it and, um, and uh, there's art and science uh, associated with prompting and so the way you interact with people, the way you interact with AIs, you're going to have to learn how to do that. And how do you apply AI to um, uh, content creation? How do you apply AI uh, to engineering or how do you apply AI to software development or how do you apply AI to marketing or finance or um, the legal profession? Whatever, whatever field that you're interested in, yeah. how do you apply AI to that? That's an area that I think is worthy of a lot of research and a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of development. And so, I think the the uh, whereas my generation was really about how do we apply computers yeah. to solve chip design and software engineering. This generation is how do we apply AI to solve this, those uh, answer all of those same basic questions. How do I apply AI to forestry? How do I apply AI to oceanography? How do I you know, so on and so forth. This, yeah, every industry, every field of science.